Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. June 1st, 2024. Let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Daniel Davis. He just did a uh, special on uh, nuclear weapons. You got to go watch that because I had a lot of misunderstandings, you know. I, I had heard of this doomsday weapon that the Russians had built called the Poseidon. And I always thought it was just going to be a huge nuclear bomb that blew up out in the ocean and created a, you know, a tidal wave and, and would bury the East Coast uh, with a, uh, you know, a huge wave. No, this, this thing is massive. It's a, it, it is literally a doomsday device. And uh, the size of it was what blew my mind is it, it actually mounts underneath the uh, submarine uh, and it's about the size of a submarine. Uh, so you really got a submarine beneath. And this thing is nuclear powered. So it can swim around under the ocean for forever, just about. Uh, and then, you know, and when it gets the signal, head towards the east coast, wherever it's programmed to hit. Now this thing is, uh, I think he's, they, I'm hoping I'm getting all my numbers right, but you got to watch that show. It's 100 megatons. So if it blows up off the coast of New York, let's say near Manhattan, Manhattan would just be gone. I mean, there would be nothing left. I mean, and then the, uh, the, the, the shock wave going out, I mean, just kiss New York City goodbye. I mean, this thing is, th and then the nuclear fallout from this thing. I mean, you're looking at, you know, if it wind blows the wrong way, you're looking at vast swaths of the United States that would be uninhabitable for years because of the radioactive fallout. And they were showing on the video that the Russians probably, I don't know how many the Russians have, but you know, they, he was showing in the, in the slide about eight to 10 of these blowing up all along the East Coast. So for me, I live in Florida, I'm, I'm a ways from the coast, but I don't think that I would survive even here in Central Florida. And I, uh, it, really, the East Coast of the United States, Atlanta, uh, New York City, Boston, Washington, D.C., uh, you name it, every one of those would be vaporized. And then if you weren't vaporized, they, they were showing uh, clips from uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki of the people that, you know, that had the flash burns. Uh, and uh, it was horrible to look at. But, you know, it's, it brings home that, you know, what Putin has been saying is we got the nukes, baby. You're not going to survive a nuclear war with Russia. No way, no how. And that's, you know, and I've heard of that dead man switch. So I, I'm not even sure that that would be all that got hit if they launched their nukes or they get some of the nukes off from the, the landmass. And of course, they got nukes that are actually in the submarines, not one that, you know, not like the Poseidon that mounts underneath the submarines. Those could launch. I mean, you're looking at the total destruction of the United States. And, uh, and here we are threatening Russia with nuclear weapons. Lindsey Graham, that fucking lunatic. And I, you know, I, I can't hold my language on that one. I know that uh, that just, I, I'm not monetized on YouTube anyway, so I might as well cuss. But, you know, that guy's a freaking lunatic, man. So was uh, that idiot General Hodges thinking, you know, Russia's, you know, if, if, if we launch nukes in Ukraine, well, actually what we're going to do now, and... Scott Ritter's been pointing this out, is we're, you know, we're, we're giving Ukraine long-range missiles to attack inside Russia. Now, understand, these are complicated platforms. You know, you don't just hand this over and then, you know, Ukraine can target, you know, a sat well, they just blew up two satellite dishes. Part of the triad, the nuclear triad in Russia, played them with fire. But anyway, uh, these are, these are going to be manned by American troops, or French troops, or German troops, because Ukrainians don't know how to operate these things, and they're actually guided in by our satellites, U.S. satellites. Don't, Ukraine don't have no satellites, so Russia knows who's attacking them. It's the United States, France, Germany, uh, you know, maybe even Lithuania. I mean, you know, and the crews that are, that are going to be manning these and doing all the targeting are United States. So we're flirting with disaster here, man. We are flirting with disaster. I, you know what? I don't want these videos to all be about geopolitics and doom and gloom. Let me show you a project that I'm doing 
in my yard and take a look at this. So as you know, my channel is not all just about geopolitics. I wanted to get this clip for today's Watching the World Burn video. So this is the latest project. You can see I'm laying in the sod. Now we're in a drought here in Florida. And uh, I guess we're going on about two weeks, maybe three weeks without rain. And uh, But I wanted to show you that piece of sod right up there. Uh, when you buy your sod, you literally have to get it in the ground that day or the next day or it'll dry out like that one did right there it took me two days to get that in the ground and then you got to water it at least twice a day so don't ever t take on a sod project unless you know a lot of rain is coming or you've got the time to water it in uh, like i keep telling you grow a garden uh, i got to build a trellis uh, this will all I'll, i got seeds i'll be planting stuff in here all this dirt has been replaced now you see what i'm doing right up here before I lay the sod as I dig out this this dirt right here you can see uh, there's not a single worm in that dirt now if you hire somebody to do sod they're just going to come in and they're going to lay the sod they're going to dig it out about two or three inches and then they'll lay the sod in well if you don't go down far enough to get the roots out all right because the roots will suck up all the moisture and then if you just lay the sod on top of the sandy soil without replacing you see what I've got here I've got composted manure uh, some uh, topsoil some potting mix I'll be put filling this in I, I got to dig it out obviously a little further uh, and you can see that root right there that would have been sucking up all the water uh, boy that is a weird looking root isn't it <laughs> I mean I don't know but I uh, so you know I just kind of trying to give you some advice on on gardening or laying sod or uh, doing your your household projects uh, but see I've got to build you know I'll show you some pictures in a future video of the trellis that I'll be building here shortly uh, it'll come up it'll be at least the height of that fence right there and come across and then I these baskets don't work don't even bother buying baskets for tomatoes those tomato plants will grow to be about eight feet tall or at least they did the last time I planted them so I've got to get a trellis in for those I just want to show you the the, the other portions of the garden I uh, these are my um, uh, collard greens they're doing great except for the one little midget right here and I uh, then of course I want to plant something in here uh, I just haven't had time and this is a cucumber plant now I, this thing requires a lot of water and you see it's doing great but once again I've got to build a triangular trellis I'm gonna have you know triangle it this way and a triangle this way uh, once that sod project is done, I'll, uh, this is the first trellis that I'll build because I got to get this guy going up the trellis. If you just leave the cucumbers on the ground, uh, they'll rot out and uh, before you can get to them. And uh, this is the blackberry bush. Uh, it's it did good. I got a few blackberries. I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, now the way I stake this out, I would not recommend that you do. What you want to get is four of these poles, not two like I did. I was trying to save money and do it with two. Uh, if you get four, you know, put one here and one there and then run your rope around the four poles and then you can you can tie up that blackberry bush with four poles. Now these are blueberry bushes. Uh, I had blueberries last year and this year I got none. So, uh, I mean, they're young, obviously, and so, you know, maybe you don't expect anything. And these are my pineapples. Now you can see they're doing great. I had one back there. Uh, he died, unfortunately. I mean, so I lost one, but I've got... Well, I got seven doing good, so I guess uh, I'm, I'm percentage-wise, uh, I did all right. Uh, you know, I, I could contact the company and ask for a refund on the one. It, <laughs> it's not worth my time. I wanted to get you one last project. Now, here, see right here. This this was sod that they laid in, and they just put it right on top of the sandy soil. Well, you can see it just, it, you know, when it gets hot, it just it goes away because there's no. And that's another thing is this compost that I'm putting in it will keep that soil moist because it you know it soaks up the water and it doesn't evaporate quickly whereas with the sand uh, i watered the head of water everything yesterday because i uh, and i tell you running the sprinklers here in florida without a well it gets damn expensive and uh you know so i'm spending a lot of money but i wanted to show you up here too all this side and everything has just been laid on top of the sand well even though i'm watering you can see how it's drying out and that's because there's just sand underneath there so eventually, you know, every year what I do is I dig out one portion of the yard and I lay down about four or five pieces of sod. Now this is a lemon tree. Boy, I'm going to tell you that was a hell of a project. 
that I paid 90 bucks for that. Now you might say that's a hell of a lot for a little tree like that. Well, the ball on it was humongous. Uh, you see this right here? I had to dig. I mean, that's the size of the ball that went into the ground. It was a good three, well, probably two and a half, two foot ball or a three foot ball. So I had to dig way down to get that into the ground. Of course, always call Ms. Dig 811 to make sure because I've got. Uh, uh, line like my electrical line goes just by the tree about right here uh my my gas line goes about right here and there's even a cable line that goes in here and then uh, if you look there's also uh, a fiber that's coming out up here somewhere luckily i didn't run into the fiber when i was digging this hole but uh, if you ever dig and you hit one of those and, and cause damage you're liable for that unless you call ms dig one last uh, thing on the video i wanted to show you look right up here I've been watering this, but see, it does no good because this side is just laid on top of the sandy soil. And in these dry conditions, you just it's just not going to work unless I dig this out and do what I'm doing in the backyard. All right, that's it for Home 101. Wasn't that cool? I mean, you know, so, yeah, I, I try to help you out with stuff that, you know, we don't have any control over the, the fate of the world. That's up to... Uh, Unfortunately, a bunch of idiot politicians in Washington, D.C. that don't know their head from a hole in the ground. But uh, anyway, so the, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, the Trump case. You realize he was just convicted of whatever it was that we, we don't even know what he was convicted of. <laughs> I mean, it was, we don't even know what the crime was. They said it was a clerical error that they did, you know, I don't even know, the statute of limitation. I mean, if that wasn't the biggest farce of a case I've ever seen in my life, and then to convict him on all 34 counts, I mean, you know that whole thing was rigged, man. I mean, I, I, you know, I, if they can do that to Trump, that's how ruthless the Democrats are. I hope you understand. If you got Democrat friends, they, you don't want Democrat friends. They are ruthless people. I mean, ruthless. They would just as soon see you starve to death and laugh in your face as you lay on the ground withering in, in agony because you have no, no food or water or whatever. They would just laugh. That's what a Democrat is. But, I mean, they are ruthless. Holy moly, I couldn't believe that. If they can do that to a former president of the United States, and then everybody says, well, you know, get Trump, get Trump. Well, what about George Bush? He killed millions of people in Iraq. The guy never faced any consequences out over and lied to the American people about weapons of mass destruction. Hell, let's take uh, Obama. He blew up American citizens. You know, the, the federal government dropped bombs on American citizens and killed them. That's what Obama did. That's a war crime. Not only that, think about what he did. they did to Libya, Hillary Clinton. And Hillary didn't go to jail for the the uh, the dossier, the steel dossier. She, they was a whole lie. That whole thing. We wasted millions and millions of dollars in taxpayer money. How about Pelosi? Don't you think Pelosi should be in jail for insider trading? And let, let's not even talk about January sixth. She set that whole thing up. I mean, my God, you know, Trump offered up to the National Guard, and then she turned it down. Anyway, we're going to get into some tweets here and just a few obviously i'm out getting my exercise and uh we're going to get into some some real news that you probably don't know about here soon i want to show you how you can make a difference in your community i approached the st john's river authority and uh we rode around i'm at chernobyl uh, if you didn't know this the chernobyl memorial forest and i showed him this view and i said look i could see myself sitting on this bench reading a book right here and I have now <clears throat> and they put this bench in for me and I think that was the coolest thing ever and I uh, I also you know I want to fund I've been trying to work with them you know but I tell you what these uh, governmental agencies they've got so much red tape I, they can't even take my donation because what I wanted to do was put a picnic table over here and uh, if you ever come to Chernobyl and you do find this bench it's just down from the beehive which is right up here but uh, when, when it rains, this fire road gets kind of hard. And if you hike the fire road, you can see it goes all the way around that area right there. And it's a beautiful, beautiful hike. But right now, they just turned up the sand. So it's tough hiking through there. So I'm not going to... Well, we'll go down a ways. I'll just... Because hiking through the sand, is, it's good for the ankles. Let's just get, get a little nature on the video. Okay, I just came down a little ways. You can see the 
It's tough hiking. I'm not going to do it today. It's just uh, too 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 much for me on a 90 degree day. But this is kind of the view that you get all the way around this fire road. So if you ever here in Chernobyl, definitely hike the fire road when it hardens up a bit. It uh, it's a great hike. All right, I wanted to make this video on that bench, but uh, I had to get a shady spot. It's too sunny today to make a video there. So we're going to get into the news. Uh, this is Megatron. A very bad day for the Israeli army in the war with Hezbollah. Israel's most advanced drone, Hermes 900, has been shot down near over Lebanon. An Israeli military base was also completely destroyed. So I don't know if you can see the, the picture there. Yeah. Uh, next thing in the news. Uh, Ukraine doesn't have enough people. Bloomberg writes, no crap. <laughs> but the thing is, what I want you to notice is this this is starting to get out in the mainstream news. It used to be only YouTubers like me that were reporting on the uh, how Ukraine is, had lost the war before it started, but uh, they're certainly losing now. So Bloomberg writes in an article about how mobilization is wiping out talent from the economy. Yeah, have you seen them dragging the people off the streets? <laughs> I mean, from what I understand, the men are actually hiding. Some of them have gone out probably camping in the woods or set up camps to get away from the uh, forced conscription. So the labor force in Ukraine, according to experts, has decreased by 27% compared to pre-war levels. They're all dead. Uh, labor shortages have become one of the main problems for businesses experience high difficulties and the search for work is taking more and more effort from managers. Well, yeah, <laughs> if I lived in Ukraine, I'd be hiding out in the woods, too. And it goes on from there, at the, the article. Uh, let's just keep going. This is D.C. Dranko. While everyone has been distracted by Biden uh, imprisoning his political opponent, he vetoed a bill that would have normalized crypto, and now... He's sending weapons overseas to attack Russia on its own soil. And I already talked about that, how the attackums will be there. And they're going to be manned by U.S. troops. So let's keep going. Uh, and the media said Trump was going to start World War III. <laughs> Insane corruption, yeah. I don't think Trump started World War III, but Joe Biden, the Democrat, will for sure. Uh, you know, Trump didn't even start a single war. Uh, first president in a long time. Uh... No, never once during the Cold War will we have dreamed of striking Russia on their own soil, but the Biden administration will, the Democrats will, the warmongering Democrats, yeah, they'll strike Russia. Uh, so not even when the Soviet Union, I mean, Russia's more powerful than the Soviet Union was. Uh, let's keep going. This is Tara Bull. Top 10 headlines in media didn't tell you this week uh, during the Trump uh, uh, trial. And I thought this was, this was really good. These, these were things, you know, that you might want to know. Representative Jim Jordan demands Alvin Bragg testify in front of Congress for the political persecution of President Trump. I don't think he'll get anywhere with that. Uh, number nine, Trump to join town hall on Elon Musk X to debate RFK Jr. That's a town hall I'm going to listen to. I guarantee that. Boycott. New York becomes trending topic on social media in response to Trump's guilty verdict. Well, I, I guess I don't know how uh, Trump, you know, is trending. Well, boycott New York. Okay. Elon Musk says America has lost faith in the legal system after the Trump trial. You think? <laughs> I mean, I already knew the legal system. I've been in the legal system. It's corrupt as hell. And this was years ago before it really got corrupt. I mean, once the Democrats got in there, got their cronies in there, the Soros DAs and everything, it's massively corrupt now. Trump received six point bump in approval after yesterday's verdict in New York. Uh, Robert Nanero loses broadcaster award following the Trump tirade. Senator J.D. Vance is calling for a subpoena for Judge Juan Merchant. I don't think that, uh, even if you subpoena him, it doesn't matter. He ain't going to jail. Nobody ever goes to jail. No Democrat ever goes to jail, that's for sure. I don't even know why they even bother. Uh, n number one, Trump donation website crashes. Yeah, I heard about this due to the traffic overload moments after the verdict. Have you donated yet? Uh, so that's the top 10. So I did want to get into, well, let's just keep going. We'll read a couple more of these. Sabotage. A big fire in NATO weapons and ammunition warehouses intended for Ukraine in Poland. I didn't, you, see, you don't hear about any of this stuff in the news. I didn't even know, know that a warehouse had gone up in Poland. 
The Polish city of Radom, R-A-D-O-M, is the most important transportation hub for NATO weapons and equipment. A large fire has broken out uh, in the warehouse complex in the city of Radom in central Poland where Western weapon systems and ammunition destined for Ukraine are stored. The Russians say the city is a major... Okay. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time, but is considered highly probable that it was caused by sabotage. Poles believe there is a vast Russian espionage and sabotage network in their country. Possibly. I would I wouldn't I mean if I was Russia I would have something in Poland. I'm not sure I'd be burning on their uh well I guess they are shipping the weapons to Ukraine, so it's a good it's a it's a legitimate target. Moscow has warned all Western countries that send weapons to Ukraine the Ukrainians and now allow them to use them to launch strikes on Russia's soil that they themselves are being targeted. Got to check my legs. Sometimes the flies get on there. Uh, also located in the same city is the Luznik, L-U-C-Z-N-I-K factory, which produces large quantities of ammunition, weapon systems, and armored vehicles. So there you go. Uh, we don't want to get this video too long. We'll keep going. Madenev. Western countries which allegedly approve the use of their long-range weapons on Russia territory, regardless of whether it concerns old or new parts of our country, must understand the following. And this is what I was talking about earlier in the video. All their military equipment and personal fighting personnel fighting against us will be destroyed, both on the territory of former Ukraine and the territories of other countries if strikes are launched from there against Russian territory. Because they have been talking about launching from Lith like Lithuania. I, what the hell are these little Baltic countries? You know, they, they're all barking, no bang. I mean, what the hell? Why would you want? Why would you want to fight Russia if you're just a little Baltic country, man? They're crazy people. They're crazy people. Uh, let's see. Russia assumes that all long-range strike weapons used by former Ukraine are current, currently directly controlled by NATO military personnel. This is not military assistance, but precipitate precipitation in a war against us. Such actions could well become a colossus, a casus belli. What the hell is a casus belli? C-A-S-U-S-B-E-L-L-I. I'll have to look that up when I get home. So uh, NATO will have to decide how to classify the consequences of possible retaliatory strikes against their equipment, objects, personnel of individual bloc countries in the context of Articles 4 and 5 of the Washington Treaty. Notice he called it Washington Treaty. <laughs> you always got to get the subtle things behind what the Russians have to say, you know. Uh, anyway, I thought that was just cute. Uh, these are dangerous and harmful, harmful misconceptions. Such individual assistance from NATO countries against Russia, whether it's controlling their long-range cruise missiles or sending troops to Ukraine, is a serious escalation of the conflict. Former Ukraine and its allies, and then it just goes on from there. Man, I tell you, these guys put out some long tweets, <laughs> or ex posts, I guess I should say. Let's see if I got anything else I wanted to talk about. Question. This is Simplicius, Simplicius the Thinker. It, if Israel is America's greatest ally, then how come I've never seen an Israeli politician, Kesnik, member, wear an American flag pin on their lapel like so many American ones wear on their uh, an Israeli pin? Good damn question. I don't... You're, people don't understand. Israel is not an ally of the United States. They have never signed a treaty with the United States. They will not come to aid the United States if we get nuked or destroyed. They're not friends of ours. All right. Uh, we just fund them because there's a lot of money in it. All right. All right. Let's let's keep going. Shadow of Isra. Isra. A massive fire broke out at a poultry farm in southern Illinois. I didn't know anything about it. Did you hear anything about this? One of the biggest free-range egg fact facilities in the country started burning last night. Millions of chickens dead. Millions of eggs gone. There wasn't any determination of what may have caused the fire. Bird flu and this fire, chickens are having a bad week. <laughs> to say the least. I think the flies get on me. Sorry. There's, there's one harassing me. Uh, between uh, bird flu and this chickens are having a bad week, and so expect your eggs and chicken prices to go up even more. There's no doubt this has some effect on the food supply. No kidding. Uh, is this what you want? Putin warns that the U.S. that he can push uh, Russia's security zone even further than Kharkov, 
If you didn't know the Russians came down in the north because the Ukrainians were stupid and were bombing Belgorod, uh, the Russian city across the border. And every time Ukraine does this, Russia has to, to retaliate. They weren't going to come in from the north. They were just going to fight for the territories of the Donbass because they'd been requested to go in there and, and aid in the, uh, the, um, dang on it, the civil war that was taking place in Ukraine. But Ukraine pushes and pushes. You know, why do you want to kill civilians? It, it, there's no military value in killing civilians. You know, ah, damn it. Flies are on me. I guess we'll finish this up right there. I'll get in, in more of the news uh, in, a, in a future video. Uh, I did want to get into some of my posts real quick. I thought this was a good one. Russia is considering their agreements with their allies for war against the West. I wonder what NATO will do in response. Our world stands on the precipice of extinction due to stupid Western leaders. Our populace remains ignorant of the threat that they just try to buy as they just try to buy food. Not to mention the BRICS nations will ditch the dollar soon, resulting in hyperinflation in the United States Empire. I'm just saying, that's a post that I put up. 36 views, woo! Oh, I'm getting a lot of traction. I'm trying to watch out for the flies. Sorry to keep doing that. These Democrats don't care. I'm convinced they are all crazy and don't care about what the end of the world as we know it would look like. <clears throat> so yeah, and uh, this was in reply to Scott Ritter. Uh, misreading Russia, West drags entire world into Armageddon by giving Ukraine green light to strike with NATO grade weapons. We talked about that ad nauseum in this video. So I thought this was a good tweet uh, or X post. I keep, God, I keep forgetting that. You, Merchin, the Trump judge in New York, yourself should take the place of uh, disgrace yourself. So you merchant yourself is what I'm saying. You merchant yourself. So this is, you know, if you, if you know the saying, let his family name go down in history like your name is Mud. So you remember Mud? Well, I'll tell you about Mud here real quick because a lot of people don't know history. If you're familiar with history, Samuel Alexander Mudd was the physician who aided and treated the Democrat John Wilkes Booth after he assassinated the Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, April 14th, 1865. Did you see a pattern here with the Democrats? <laughs> they, just, they just convicted Trump and they assassinated Abraham Lincoln, two Republicans, right? Uh, it seems Democrats are at it again. Uh, hence the phrase, your name is forever mud. It will now become your name is forever mention or merchant, M-E-R-C-H-A-N, merchant. Your name is forever merchant. Uh, let's see. In including all you billionaires in the world supporting genocide Joe and the Democrats, the CIA has gone too far. And this was in reply to Elon Musk. Indeed, great damage was done today to the public's faith in the American legal system. If a former president can be a criminal. All right, that's it for the video. Peace out and stay free. One more nature clip for the video. It always amazes me. I am the only person in this entire park most of the time when I come here. And today especially, the parking lot was completely empty. And it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's not even, it might be 90 degrees, which is not bad for Florida. And look at this. Would you rather hike here? This is within... 25 minutes of my house I'd say maybe probably less than that maybe 15 minutes and I uh, but people hike around the neighborhood I mean look at this and it's a it's a nice hike because there's it's not too buggy even though the fly was on me back there I mean every now and then you get a fly buzzing you but not not too bad now in the middle of the summer it's, it can get buggy here but even then it's not too bad because it's you know it's a nice wide open area and if you get a breeze like I've got right now this perfect day. I don't get it. While I enjoy the hike back, I wanted to uh, tout a future video. I, I went ahead and upgraded my camera to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now, I have this video is made with the 23 and the 22. I'll be trading in the 22 on the 24, so hopefully that'll improve the quality of the videos. But I did want to ask uh, people who watch these videos, what would you do for an external mic? I mean, I know the road. And you've got the, the ones, but the the problem I have with those mics is how do you replace the battery in them? You know, I mean, if once that battery goes dead, you got a $300 paperweight on your hands that, you know, and how, how long does that battery last? It might last three years, who knows? But I'm not going to pay $350 for an external mic, you know, Bluetooth, 
that's uh, that the battery's going to go bad and I can't replace the battery. You know, now if you could trade it in and get another one, you know, for, for let's say half price or something, then it might be worth it. But as far as I know, you got to buy a whole new external mic setup. So if, let me know if you have any recommendations for an external mic solution that is, you know, that'll last a long time and I don't have to worry about replacing it every three years. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.